In this report, the real and inevitably sciencey reason why those big fat panoramic glass sunroofs in cars explode from time to time. Even though they don't really explode, they just go bang. Anyway, just when you think you're at the bottom of the friggin' exploding sunroof rabbit hole, in walks Morpheus. Or in this case, a dude named Rob with actual runs on the board in this domain, and he hands over yet another red pill. And I was already all stocked up, frankly, on them, but prepare to bleed from the ears, irrespective. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. For buyers. Here in Australia. Website for that. Obviously. Or you can just click the card that's, you know, out there now, just above the sunroof, dude. And remember, the Bluetti AC200P portable power station, bigger battery than a RAV4 hybrid, just saying, pure sine wave inverter for proper AC output, plus USB and 12 volt and inductive charge pads. We could go on all day. You could win this $3,300 powerhouse. The competition there is still active, of course. It's great at home. Even better out in the field on the road to Dingo Piss Creek. Bluetti is giving one of these babies away and possibly to you, dude. In seven or eight days. Anyway, just to have a little look at, you know, that video just up there to find out how you can enter Biggest giveaway ever on the channel, just saying. It's like fishing, dude. If you don't put a line in, you're certainly not going to kill a fish. Big Blue Eddie sale is on at the moment too. Links in the description for that. Mother's Day will be here before you know it. Imagine the look on Mommy's face when she sees the AC200P you got her for a birthday for 900 bucks off during the sale. You'll be in the will for another 12 months, dude, guaranteed. Or until her next birthday, whichever comes first. That is a done deal. Show mommy how much you care about the inheritance. So, this report is a follow-up on the issue raised last week by Leslie Teo, Teo, Tomato, Tomato, who was driving along in his or her CLA 250, a quick shout out to Three Prong, official supplier of vehicles in hell. And no plans to move away from combustion down there, I note, anytime soon, obviously. Look out for Satan's S Class rocking the inverted shuriken while you're down there with me for eternity. Pro tip, dude heaven for the climate, hell for the company. Can't have it both ways, just saying. Anywho, Leslie is driving along, humming a few bars of Marilyn Manson, a little bit of Rob Zombie, touch of Hinder recently, pumping out the fat beats. Not a care in the world when Satan himself reaches up and pulls the pin on Leslie's sunroof. Living hell, consumer-wise, shortly to follow. You can check out last week's report uh, up there. I've been doing that a lot this video so far, but I don't need a chiropractor later. Anyway, do it, dude. Click it. Click it good. You know you want to. Executive summary. Dealership says, must have been a rock. Physics says, fuck off, idiot. That cannot happen, you ignorant twats. It's all, you know, neck twisting. I got some interesting comments. Why you would ever cut a hole in the roof and weaken the structure? Beyond me. Then put glass in the hole that may or may not take the loads that the front bonded glass does. One would think the manufacturer's strain gauges the body here static and dynamically flex before and after. Are these glass roofs shattering because of loads of a flexing body and not a foreign object? Be interesting to know the sales of glass sun roofs. Personally, I will never buy a car with a glass sun roof for this and many other reasons. I would agree that the last thing any of us need down here in Shitsville is any more photons incident upon our domes. Therefore, 
you know. A sunroof does seem kind of redundant, doesn't it? At least in that respect. And in many vehicles, they are inconveniently packaged with all of that other range-topping spec level. So it is kind of impossible to have all the fruit without the glass roof, often enough. But you can leave them closed. So there's that. I disagree strongly that the structure is weaker as a consequence of, quote-unquote, cutting a hole in the roof. Certainly if that hole is not meant to be there, that big fat aperture, like, it might weaken the roof. But if a sunroof is a design provision from the ground up, like, it's quite okay. The sunroof aperture would be braced, like, additional components would be welded in on the production line, and internal components, structural ones, would not be removed. Like, it's an integrated design, plus strain gauges. Come on, dude. It's 2022. That structure and the loads are known. They're known before they build even one prototype out here in reality. They've already FEA'd the shit out of it, frankly. They've cut it into a billion slices virtually and examined each one of those from every friggin' direction. That's what FEA is. They've imposed all foreseeable loads in virtual space. They've even crashed that bloody thing in virtual space. There is no, and I do hate to use this word in this context, but there is no strength reduction dimension to the sunroof issue in a modern car, like none. If you cut a big hole in a roof or anywhere else where no hole is intended to be, different story. Plus, to language murdering JB, I would say the body of the average car already has five dirty big holes in it, doesn't it? Four doors and a big tailgate on the back. They all sit there in big fat holes in the structure. If it flexed under load, you would not be able to open them. I don't see people bitching and moaning about that with modern cars, like, I will never buy a car with doors or a tailgate kind of thing. It just doesn't happen, or at least it hasn't happened to me. Engineering for dummies, okay? You design the structure to deliver acceptable performance with the holes that it needs to facilitate its functionality. To me, that just seems simple. That's how you would do this. It's almost certainly not a structural design defect causing these sporadic sunroof failures. According to carcomplaints.com on the 23rd of June 2020, a class action lawsuit in Morocco alleged that Satan's car makers sold vehicles with defective panoramic roofs and it sought to recover $200 million. Proper dollars too, not Schittsvillian microbucks, plus costs. The lead plaintiff there claimed that Satan himself reached up one day and pulled the pin on his ML350's sunroof, I'm paraphrasing, while his sister drove it along the highway, which must have been quite shocking. According to car complaints, Three Prong allegedly gives customers in this situation a $250 to $500 reach around under the table, provided they agree not to sue. In the lawsuit, the glass manufacturer St. Gobain Securit is also named as a co-defendant. I don't know, I guess AAA glass was already taken, huh? So why is this glass going poopy in its trousers? Just finished watching your article on the exploding Mercedes sunroof. May I add a little insight? The reason these tempered sunroofs explode is due to a thing called nickel sulphide inclusion. Like you say, there is no way in hell that a stone can do that flicked up from a vehicle. This issue also occurs with glass tabletops, doors, etc. And it might be worth doing a Google search for it's all there to add more fuel to the fire. Regards, Rob Tate former owner of Car Tint in Melbourne for the past 45 years until a battle with terminal prostate cancer made me retire. P.S. Love the shows. Thank you very much for that information, Rob. And I'm terribly sorry, dude, to hear that you're in this confronting position. 
I do hope that life affords you the ongoing opportunity to remain a pain in the ass to as many people who deserve it as possible in the limited time that you have remaining. And I say this with some authority because this is my objective on a daily basis. Deserved ass pain imposition is something that gives my life meaning. Perhaps it can also help you. Like, everybody needs a purpose. And dude, just because your DNA is betraying you, that's not a reason not to be a pain in the ass to people around you who deserve it. At least, not in my view. And your situation may even afford you greater license to act in this way. I appreciate the technical insight also. Now, I looked into this, and according to SME, which is a project engineering powerhouse in America, nickel sulfide inclusions are absolutely a cause of tempered glass failure. So essentially what happens is nickel sulfide is a crystalline impurity in glass that cannot be entirely eliminated no matter how hard one tries to do so. And this stuff exists in a couple of different states, okay? High density and low density. And when the manufacturing of glass is complete, the impurity is in its high density state. And then... Heat from sunlight acts on it over time, during which it transitions into its low density state, which means that it expands, obviously. And glass is kind of intolerant of that. Eventually, this expansion forms a micro crack in the glass, which normal annealed glass can tolerate. But tempered glass absolutely cannot because it's so highly stressed. It's got compression on the outside and tension on the inside. And as soon as that micro crack forms, more or less, the whole glass panel shatters and it does so catastrophically. I'll link to the SME page in the description if you're interested in more detail on this, but what they're showing you just there is the fracture site on a window in a commercial building, right? And you can see, right, pretty clearly that the fractures radiate out from a central point where the inclusion is, okay? And if you zoom right in on that, you can see that the fracture site breaks into two hexagonal chunks, whereas all the other bits are three or four-sided, which is kind of vestigially interesting in a forensic engineering sort of materials context, I guess. And if you zoom in even further, like Inception, I guess, only with broken glass, there is that bastard silver of nickel sulfide put there by Satan himself sometime earlier. According to IQ Glass in the disunited kingdom of Brexitania, head office somewhere between West Anal Sex and Boris Hare on Avon, unfortunately, there is no way to totally remove the risk of nickel sulfide inclusion. In a standard pane of glass, the estimated risk of nickel sulfide inclusion is one square metre in every 10,000 square metres of glass. But you can reduce the risk of a nickel sulfide inclusion breakage by putting the glass through a finishing process called heat soaking. One in every 10,000. Like, that's probably broadly in line with the sunroof failures that we see reported from time to time. That would be like 100 failures for every 1 million sunroofs out there. Essentially what they're saying is, if you heat soak the glass in a dirty big oven after manufacturing, before installation, obviously, it forces the nickel sulfide inclusions to transition and expand, and thus the infected panels just shatter spontaneously before you stick them in a car or on the outside of a building. So that's pretty clever. And the reason this happens in things like sunroofs as opposed to things like side glass of cars, just spitballing it here, it might simply be greater exposure to heat loads from solar radiation, right? It's probably more common also on north-facing windows here in Australia and Vicky Verka kind of upstairs. It's also probably more common in places like Darwin than Hobart on a per capita basis or Arizona versus Ontario or something. 
And the Machiavellian bastard in me is actually wondering if the propensity of sunroof failures might just be due to senior executive bean counter bastards in the car industry putting pressure on glass makers to cut costs. One obvious way of doing so might just be leaving the heat soaking post treatment part out of the production equation and hoping that we all don't notice. But surely, an esteemed car maker such as Three Prong, which we recently discovered was running its command online system using a Windows XP operating system, surely they would never cut costs in such an underhanded way. That's unthinkable. <laughs> I think you'd agree.